Well, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Let's go ahead and make sure all can hear me. If you please type the number one in the chat box. Let me know that you can. I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Amy. How you doing, Brenda? Afternoon, Kevin. Morning, Helen. Yep, I forget all the time. It's not per se afternoon everywhere, right? <laughs> Still morning in some places. Morning, 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 morning. All right. Welcome, everyone. Uh, let's go ahead and get started here. Keep in mind that everything we look at is for educational purposes only. Nothing is meant to be advice or recommendations. Right, we've got a lot of great stuff coming up this week. Uh, you've got on the 29th is Monster Market Movers, which is on Wednesday. Thursday is SPX Cash Flow. That's a Q&A for anybody that's in Brandon's uh, SPX class. Uh, Mastermind Group on Tuesday, of course. Uh, Power Hour Coaches Playbook Market Mornings all on their sched regular schedule. Uh, total market control, guys. It, and I said this this morning in our YouTube show. This is not about mind control. At least not taking control of your mind. Me taking control of your mind. But it is about you taking control you personally taking control of your mind, being able to control the market. And I'm not talking about through some vibes or waves or thinking, hmm, sing kumbaya, right? It's jumping out there and knowing what to do and how to, how to approach the market in various scenarios and the things that you should consider doing, the types of trades you should co consider doing, right? So that's coming up on July 6th and 7th. I will be teaching that training, so do not miss it. Uh, Power Option Plays, Covered Call, Explore, e -mini, Think Tank are all on their regular schedule this week. No, not a spooky. No, you're good. <laughs> you're good, Brenda. Um, and of course, as I mentioned, all three of these guys, this is kind of your week, right? We start off Monday mornings. We go right into Power Hour. Every day is Market Mornings. And then Trading Coaches Playbook wraps the week up. For us. Here's our follow us page. We appreciate everyone that is following along. If you're not, please, by all means, do follow the various social platforms out there. Right. And then uh, Tony's patterns in a flash, guys. He is uh, he just got done with his um, his free trainings. And I got to tell you, guys, the stuff that Tony's doing in patterns in a flash blows me away. When I talk with this man and we're talking, looking at an intraday chart and he goes, you see this setting up I'm like, no. No, it's there. Watch. And the pattern appears. Like, I, I didn't see it. He's, I know, I know, I know. This is what you got to be looking for. Tony's a brilliant mind when it comes to pattern analysis. So make sure you check that out. Ooh, don't want to share that yet. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's go ahead and uh, share with me the trades that you guys have done or are, and are looking um, at doing today. Drop those in the chat box. I'd love to see what you've done up to this point. Right. It is, uh, you know, a good portion of the day is gone already. Uh, my favorite part of it is right here. All right. And it's funny, I was brought back today when I was teaching the market morning show. I was brought back way, way back when um, to when I first started trading from home, not even full time, just part time, just looking at the markets. And I had an office set up in my basement. Uh, it, it was in a small room, which was probably seven by nine, maybe, maybe. Maybe uh, it had a 275 gallon oil tank in there. And when they delivered oil, you couldn't stay down there. The, the smell was too bad. It doesn't get through the house, but just, you know, from where they're pumping it in, being in, at that meet in that, uh, in that room, it's just, it's too much. Well, I'm sitting here today and I could see the reflection in my mirror, my uh, monitor behind me of the oil truck pulling away from the front of the house. They dropped off oil today. And had I still been down there today would not have been a trading day. <laughs> Because it is a brutal aroma uh, of that oil. But humble beginnings is where it all starts, right? Drop those trades in, folks. I'm not seeing any yet. Maybe I missed it. I'll scroll back up through the content a little bit, the comments. <clears throat> I did see Brenda say no trades for me. Uh, it's been an interesting day, right? Let's uh, do this. So here's the S&P 500. We made a nice run into the S&P 500. Here's the first candle of the day, gap up. And of course we pull back, right? We push back up and of course we pull back, right? We've got lower highs, 
Bottom is not lower though. As we pull back, we came back up above the moving average. So now we have higher lows. We have lower highs in there. Right, there's our lower highs. And oh, I think I grabbed the wrong tool. Here's our higher lows. All right. Nice breakout. Retest and a bounce. Uh, and there's the S&P 500 finally gains back. It puts in a new, uh, the, so a higher high, not a new high, but a higher high right in here. Robert said, you also didn't want to be down here this how bad the oil hikes hit. Yeah, well, <clears throat> excuse me. So, mm, hold on. so here's crude from today, right? 10 o'clock, we had a nice pull down, and then we ran from about 106 all the way up to 109 and a half. Right, and we're selling out now about 109. Uh, Chris had had a bus busy morning elsewhere. I made two entries later, managing the spies and the Q puts. There you go. Uh, PK said two spy trades, $1,290 um, break even. Um, she trade on coin, 100 bucks. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Good job, PK. Yeah, excellent, 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 excellent. So <clears throat> we see the move up on crude today, right? And then actually, let's flip over to Omega Charts. I'm going to take the symbol grid down for a moment just so we can kind of zoom in as much as possible. So what are we looking at today? We, we had closed up above the 21, first time in a while that we're above that 21, right? We're in a, a pure neutral bias at this point on, on Friday's close. We gap up, we pull back, we retest the 39.06 and we bounce. We get a little bit below it. We get a little bit below the 3,900 level uh, with a low today, roughly uh, 38.90 uh, at that point, right? <clears throat> but when you look at it, nothing about it very exciting, right? Maybe you took an entry on the bounce, right? Hopefully it was day trades, which is pretty much where I'm at right now at this uh, point, right? Is all day trade. But when we look at what's happening, you know, you really, you really need to focus on what the S and P is doing, right? If I, uh, you know, I'm going to leave the now. Let's do this. Let's get rid of the mouse, and let me grab. Let's get a different color. All right. So as we were in a bullish pattern up here, right, hitting the all-time highs, we rolled over, moving averages got all messed up. They got into a bearish bias, a true bear right here, right? Eights below the 21, below the 55. Just everything in the right order. We got a quick pop above the eight and then a fail. A quick pop above the eight and a fail. Put in a double bottom pattern. We broke that new swing high, right? The lower swing high. We broke above it. And then we got into this dreaded box of neutrality. And we just went sideways for oh so long a time. And then that break out of that, I remember that day like it was yesterday. It wasn't that far away from yesterday, but like it was yesterday, right? What a great break, intraday, great setups. You got a, a continuation gap to the downside, another continuation gap to the downside. You got another continuation gap to the downside, and then you got a gap up, right? And then for one, two, three, four days of the last five, including today, um, or actually five of the last five days, you had a bullish move. And then if you don't count, I'm saying not counting today, right? If you leave today out of the mix, okay? So right now, the key is going to be either I need to see us move above our high today, pull back and bounce, 
or I'm going to step back, be in position one in the chair, sitting back, hands behind my head, lean back on the, the, the chair, feet up on the desk, keyboard nowhere to be seen, found, touched. It's completely out of the way, hidden, if it, if it were, as it were. Um, and then wait for that pattern for tomorrow, that pullback and that bounce, or the break to the downside. And what's really nice about it, and I'm going to throw this out there again today, and maybe I'll have a, a better word for it. But when I can find a stock that gets near a key level, especially one with a confluence. So mm, let's see. Let's say my stock pulls back and gets right around that 3,900, 3,906-ish level, right? That's a blue zone that's in there, basically. Right? Let's say we get about that level. Okay? Well, at that point, what am I looking at then? Well, what's it going to do? Is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? What, what is my thought? What is my belief? Where do I feel we're going to be making that move? Right? If I get the move to the upside, I get a pullback and a bounce. There's the entry to the upside. No harm, no foul. We can easily take a bullish entry because we have a clear and concise entry. It would actually be up to this point here, to the 100-point level. Right? If we're wrong, and it doesn't do that tomorrow, Instead, it flips over and rolls the other way, right? And pulls down, retests that 3,900 and fails. There's the bearish entry tomorrow, right? And you've got the 3,843 level confluence with the eight moving average. Okay, so this trade, we got a whole bunch of names floating around for it um bi-directional switch hitter uh what was some of the other ones that some have come up with go with the flow uh river trade switch back which we're getting some feedback on switch back um you know yes or no you know where some are saying yes i like it and even from my own staff my own team saying yeah i, I like some of these so uh, you know for now lack of a better name i've been calling a bi-directional trade right so if you guys have a name you think would work for that, something that kind of flip-flops there, in, in other words, we could take this bullish or bearish. These are becoming right now my absolute favorite setup. It's what I'm calling the inflation buster, right? We're going to blow it right up in their own face, right? If you get that breakout when we close to the upside, you're going to have high implied volatility or higher, right? And then you get that break, market makers waiting, you pull up and roll over right there, you're still going to be, if you're selling, you're selling at a very high premium at that point, right? It's just we're looking for, for setups uh, that give us an opportunity to crush what's going on uh, in the market right now, right? And that's exactly what I've got. If we can make the move from 3,900 down to 3,850, call it. it, says 43, but call it 3,850, 50 point move. Yeah, I'll take it. All day, that's five points on the spy, right? I will take it all flipping day long. Right, and be excited about that, that setup. So I don't want to influence anybody, but if you have a name for that type of setup, by all means, please drop it in. I'd love to get some uh, feedback from y'all on what you think. Or if you just like or dislike one of the ones that you're seeing or hearing, uh, let me know. Right, This actually, I have, and, and here, I'm going to put the onus on everyone here right, for a moment. I have a brand new training I'm going to record. We're going to build a page for it. It's free, no cost, right? But it's going to teach this trade setup in its entirety, in its entirety. So all I need is a name of the strategy to do it. And I like some of what we've got, but I think there might be, might be a better opportunity out there. Once that's done, once that is finished, it'll be on the tradinglikeaboss.com website. Karen said bi-directional is probably the best, but flip-flop is more fun. Yeah. Jennifer said, I like inflation buster. Frank said, I like bi-directional. Okay. I appreciate any feedback on it, folks. All right. Um, so, and then, of course, you can convert this. To spy, I don't know why I did it. Uh, why did it do that? 
I think I hit some hotkey and brought up a program. All right, you've got SPY here, not the same picture as SPX, okay? But similar pattern to it. Preferably, I'd want to see the move to the upside. If it does push down, I know that 385 is my support, and I don't have a whole lot of wiggle room in there, especially with the eight down below. All right, so we take the bidirectional, the Swiss trade. All right, one Swiss trade. Name, trouble using for something, if not this. Um, but you've got some room. You just you know your limitations going in. That's it. That's it. This is the limitation, right? And then what we're probably going to do is build out a a video that we try to put out every week. That's got a handful of these in it to give you guys some some potential candidates to trade off of. Right, um, week in and week out. So, all right. So let me see what we got here. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. The either or trade. <laughs> um, Spy Ninja. There you go, Brenda. Trips that I still like wiggle waggle, but it's still it, it, maybe that's too silly. Yeah, it just kind of loses it. Heads or tails. Okay, Jennifer. I mean, yeah, I, I, you know, it's true, Jennifer. I do like inflation buster, but that, you know, I sound like a used car salesman with that. If, if that's the name of it, um, but maybe, maybe we'll see seesaw. There you go, Alan. Seesaw. Okay. So, guys, when we're looking at SPY, we're looking at the markets. You got to make sure that you're focused on what is happening. Right, the comparison that I just did on SPX versus SPY, you should be doing every day. Right here, you should get very good at look left, looking left and seeing what's going on. Where are my support and resistance levels? Do I have a switch trade, a switchback trade, a, um, a wiggle waggle trade, a bi direction, whatever we call it? Do I have that setup happening in here today? If I do, it just, the reason of inflation buster is this, guys. How many times have we seen here? If we look, look at the dreaded box of neutrality, right? If you just look what happened inside of that box, right? We're up and then we're down two days in a row and then we're up and then we're down two days in a row and then we're up and then we're down lots of days in a row as we broke out of that box, right? You've got to be able to look left and identify and see what's happening out there. Biggest problem I run into with traders all the time, all the time, is they're not utilizing history properly to help make trading decisions. For many cases, they don't even know it's there. Someone doesn't even focus on it. If you're an intraday trader and you're trying to day trade spy, you're only looking at today. You're not looking at anything else. No, you know, uh, you know, Brandon's way of looking at multi time frames, right? And he has his methodologies. I've got my four pack, right? Which is a free download that we offer. Um, I'm going to make sure that it becomes a little bit more prominent that people can find it. So, it's a matter of what do I see when I look at the chart? And it's got to be more than just this is what's happening. You've got to be able to manipulate and manage markets, hence, you know, the total market control. You've got to be able to manipulate and manage markets. And when I say manipulate, I'm not talking about you get to, you know, enforce your will upon them, right? But you've got to be able to manipulate what you see, manage what's happening and has happened and come up with a solution and answer where you believe it goes from here. And if you're wrong, you know, one of my favorite lines, is, you know, in a movie is by Mr. Miyagi, best block, no be there, right? Get out the freaking way. Best block is not to be in, in the way of it, right? Just get out of the way. That's your best block. Don't be there, right? Mr. Miyagi and Yoda are kind of like buds, right? They're hanging for sure. 
right? Both brilliant, wisdom, very wise beyond their years. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, used car costs a whole lot these days. Yep, I, you're, you're right. Uh, I think it's LL. You're right. I'm actually, we're headed out tomorrow to buy my daughter a brand new car. So at least that's the goal. We've done a lot of research. We know where we're buying it. We know the price of it already. Uh, as long as they don't come up with some wacky junk, um, we'll be okay. Switchblade. Ooh, Chris, there you go. <laughs> Indecision. Okay, Joan. Inflation buster would be a limited time terminology, six months, 12 months, but um, but not if you want to use it for years to come. Valid point, Robert. Upsy downsy. <laughs> okay, Gene. Uh, inflation brush grabs one's attention to check it out. Yeah, no problem. Trade. Fulcrum trade. You know, I have a trade set up called the Fulcrum, Alan, um, for pivot point trade. But yes, it, it is a word that works for what we're looking for. Um, I even started looking at uh, names of dragons and stuff like that. You know, some really cool names, two-headed dragon, because this is a two-headed monster. It goes both ways, right? One's going to bite you from the top. One's going to bite you from the bottom. Pressure cooker. Yeah, Jennifer, we've got one of those. To the moon, Alice, to the moon. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So, guys, you got to make sure you know where the market's going and what's happening. You've got to step back away from the screen and view the market. You have to. You cannot get so hung up on the furthest candle to the right only. You've got to look at the bigger picture of what tends to happen. Does that mean it fails at the same exact place every time? No, of course not. Of course not. But the odds are in your favor if it's done it before. That's why. Yeah, so I have a pivot hinge trade trip. Trip said the hinge trade. But I do appreciate everybody's help. We'll make a decision probably this week. It's a crazy week this week, but daytime, nighttime. There you go, Joan. Uh, it's a crazy week this week. Um, yes. So, by the way, I meant to say this earlier, and I forgot. Uh, looks like someone got a hand up. LL, okay. Um, I forgot to mention it. It's not on our list, which I need to get it there. Um, guys, come... October, Brandon is doing a live training in New York. There will be very limited spots uh, of what we're going to be able to fit in the room. Uh, it will not be a uh, streaming event. It will only be live. Uh, Brandon's going to go through and walk, walk through what it is to be, to live in the life of an online trader. He's not just focused on futures. He's going to be dealing with stocks, options, futures, uh, any instrument, it won't matter. When you learn his system, it doesn't matter what the instrument is. You can use everything he teaches the exact same way, right? All I'm telling you is the only, thing that, the only reason it's not up on the website yet is the hotel has not sent me paperwork to confirm the dates. But I know the people at the hotel we have booked there before. And October 27th and 28th is a Thursday, Friday. Brandon is going to be at the Thursday event. I will be teaching an inner circle slash mastermind group, a bonus live training that we added this year as, again, a bonus um, for one day uh, in New York. So you guys will, uh, anybody that's in those trainings, you'll get an automatic invite to it for the second day, right? But um, just block your counter out for those days so you know what's going on. You know, I'm giving you as much notice as I can. So, all right. Hinge trade day and night, axle swivel, rubber band trade. Someone, you know, someone's already um, trademarked that rubber band trade. Spinner, there you go, trip. But I like rubber band trade. I really do. Uh, if, if that was available, I would have used it already. Like I said, someone that I know uses it already, so I'm not, not looking to do something exactly what someone else is. Um, not sure, PK. 
All right, so North Pole, South Pole. <laughs> wow. So many of you know that Amelia is our head trader. And yes, it is true if you've heard the rumors that Amelia will be semi-retiring. Um, you know, every, every week, every month, she kind of backs away a little bit more, a little bit more. Um, she'll still be very involved in Mastermind in Inner Circle, um, without a doubt. But she'll be doing some less of the day by the day to day type stuff, um, day in and day out. So, uh, and Amelia will continue a trade watch alert. She will continue to submit her trades in and put them out on on Twitter and so forth. Right? Yeah, Jennifer said so happy for Amelia. Me too. She deserves it. She's worked hard. Um, she busts her buns for us. Has for years. It was just a million I when I first started. Amelia was it. It was a million I. That was it. No one else. <laughs> um, no one else. So uh, Amelia submits a trade uh, to uh, trades to her students every day. She sends out a couple of emails with what's going on in the market. One of them is a setup of uh, SPI, SPY and Qs uh, for pivot trades. Uh, she does three directional trades uh, in the market as well. Um, and she shoots for, you know, whatever one she can get to work is where she's at. So if we look today, uh, she did a gap fill on the cues, right? So what you're looking at here, if I grab the drawing tool, right? So this is today, 627 single, you know, one sided of the option buy to open at 932 this morning, 932 and 23 seconds. Right, she did 13 contracts. Amelia is infamous, notorious, maybe, for using fib numbers. Right, 13 is a fib number. She did the 298 puts and she bought them at three dollars and 19 cents. Buy to open 319. Same minute. What, 30 seconds later, 31 seconds later? She closes the trade of all 13 contracts at $3.50. So you're talking about 31 cents. Oh, but Rob, what am I going to do with 31 cents? Guys, she did 13 contracts. So for Amelia, let's see where my calculator opens up. It's here somewhere. Just don't know which monitor it's on. Or not. I don't know. It won't open up for me. Not sure. Oh, it's because I've got the pen. That's why. So we got 0. 0.31 times 13. 0. 0.31 times 1300. That's $403 in less than a minute. Let me ask you, how many of you would be angry if it took you less than a minute to make $400? And I'll just take a one for yes or two for no. <laughs> Not less than a minute, she crushed it. Not at all, Jennifer, right? Not at all. Nope. Okay, all kind. Of, yep, there you go. There you go. $800 an hour. No, it's a lot more than that, right, Trip? It was a minute. It was one minute for four hundred dollars. <laughs> you know, it, it was like more like a half a minute, but we'll call it a minute. It is beautiful. Never angry. There you go, Kevin. Absolutely right. Absolutely All right. So, guys, yeah, she did a great trade here, right? She did a great trade. Uh, for me, I, it's Monday. Mondays are a horrible day for me. I don't get a whole lot of trade time in. But Q's were on my list today. Q's and SPY. I looked at SPY and I'm looking at pivot points and, you know, considering the way the market's moving, I never got down clearly to a pivot point or clearly to a resistance or a support level, right? The R1 or the yellow is the pivot, PP, right? I never got to either one of them on SPY. I have two of these windows open. I have two of these windows open. One is SPY, one is Q's. There you go, Jeff. $46,800 an hour. Boom, chagalaga. All right? And we crushed right down. We pulled back. We pulled back. 
And on this 950 candle, we closed just below. We closed just below. On the next candle, we opened up about where we closed, we pushed up. If we can retest off of that pivot point, which is, Uh, I'm not going to be able to see the numbers on it. So it's roughly 292 and a half. Okay. 292 and a half. And that's on the nine. If you see the candle, if you look at the top of this box, it shows 955. That means 951 and 955 is the candle time. All right. If we go back and look on this template and this is my four pack, right? Where I'm looking at four different time frames, four different time frames, minute, five minute, 15 minute, or actually 30 minute, and daily, right? And then the upper right, this is just when I'm looking at a pre market. That's all that one is for. Only one window has this, everything else has just four windows in it. So if we look, We said about 292 and a half. Let's just use that line. 292 and a half. And again, I'm off a little bit, but I'm close enough. All right? So there's the close below. There's the break above. There's that 955 candle. Now let's go ahead and do that on a one minute candle. Two ninety two and a half. Okay. So we're looking down here. Here's that nine. Uh, what did we say? Nine fifty five candle, right? Fifty to fifty one to fifty five. Nope. Let's see. So there we go. Fifty one is right here. Fifty two. We pushed up. We came back and retested. We bounced there's the entry into the trade, okay? So we got a confirmation, not just based on what happened on the pivot chart, but we got a confirmation back on um, the regular chart that we kind of had that V bottom going on in there, All right? Strong move down and we had started to climb, okay? So, oops, and I wanna close that down. If we go back to the pivots, what am I looking at here? And I'm go what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up a little bit bigger and I'm going to scale it backwards. Just to make it easier to see. All right. So we came down. Close down below here, bounce on this candle. That was the entry into the trade. Okay. We move up. We move up. Half of the trade taken off at this midpoint there. And I'll share the numbers with you in a second. As we rolled back over, we were stopped out of the second half of the trade between these two candles. Okay. Stopped out of the second half of the trade. Now, did it work out for the better? Yes, it did. Right. If we look at it, had I just left it alone, where it pulled back, it bounced and finally ran in either there or here, you would have been out of that trade, one of them, but not comfortable with what it did. Okay. So that pop right there is the major entry that I'm looking for. Major entry, All right? Guys, we had Amazon worked out amazing today. Google worked out amazing today. Okay, so a lot of trade opportunities on the day. Lots of trading opportunities on the day. All right, beautiful. So I'm glad to see that you guys are trading a little bit, getting some good, good candidates off of there. I love it. And do never feel bad, never feel bad about not trading for the day. I used to feel horrible. Man, it drove me nuts. 
If I wasn't trading, if I didn't trade, I felt I wasted the day. Now there are days that go by a couple of days a week. I don't place a trade. That's okay. It doesn't matter. It's finding the right entry. I don't, I'm not trying to force to trade, I'm trying to find the right entry to trade, I'm not pushing it uh, to take an entry on a position. Um, yeah, Brenda said, that's what's happening to me right now, Rob. Thanks for saying that. Listen, you know, in inner circle was Friday and Saturday, 10 o'clock to two o'clock, we had it. And although Brandon was teaching and I kind of start off and I talk for a couple of minutes in there and we just, everybody's chatting. That's what we do. You know, it's a, it, it's more conversational than it is anything else. It's a meeting. It's not a webinar, but it's on camera if you want to be right. And it's, it's a meeting. Everybody's microphone is open at any times, jump in, ask questions. Whoa, 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 stop there. I didn't get that. And I made a statement and I said it both days, Friday and Saturday. If you can learn to trade this market, you will never have a problem of being able to trade any market that's out there. I'm not saying you'll make millions, but if you can learn to trade in this market, you can trade any market condition because this is a horrible market to trade in. The whipsaws of up, down, up, down, up, down. We're all, and intraday, down 300, up 500. Down 400, up 300. I mean, it's just all in the same day. Five, six, seven, 800 point moves, 1,000 point moves intraday. Crazy time, right? Great trade setup there, guys. And, you know, if, if listen, when I ask for trades, number one, I would never do something and say, oh my goodness, I can't believe Bill, Mary, Bob, whomever, you actually took that trade today, right? Never, ever, ever. This is all about what, what I've tried to do from the start is building out that community, right? That's what I want here is that community. So if you have trades that you've done and you throw it out there and it went against you, you broke even, maybe you just made a little bit, maybe you made a lot. It's never a bad thing, right? Number one, you're, you're, you're putting it out into the universe, folks. You're putting it out there for everybody to see because I'm going to read it. And I'm never going to say, Bob Smith, you did this. Or, you know, Mary Jones, you did this, right? It's Mary, it's Bob, it's Bill, it's whoever, right? It's PK. You don't need to know PK's last name. It doesn't make a difference, right? It's PK, <clears throat> right? But by doing so, you're putting yourself to some accountability. And the accountability is where we miss a lot of we're not having an answer for it. And believe it or not, when, when the markets first shifted to online trading versus um, brokerage, having to do it through a broker, for me, I did not have to hear the, well, I told you that was a bad idea on that last one, didn't I? You know, I was like, thanks, I already lost three grand. And now you have to remind me that you said, see, I told you so. And of course I need that. You're right, Jennifer. Volatility definitely does provide opportunities. Right? And I appreciate that. Jennifer also said it was great advice. So, all right, let's do this. Let me take you over to the presentation. And I want to talk about midterm election concerns. You know, I know some people get bothered sometimes if I say something, they think, oh, I'm not on that side politically. I think this, I think that. You know, we can have different opinions and still be friends. Just because I think one way, you think another, it doesn't make either one of us right or wrong. It just makes us different. And there are different reasons for it, right? So, and I'm, don't, don't reply back to this. Don't give me an answer back on this, okay? I'm not looking for that. Although I know some of you will, like Robert and so forth, will probably will, okay? But think about this. If I ask the question, do you believe the rich should be taxed as much as possible? You're going to get some people that say yes, and you're going to get some people that say no, right? And bottom line is, your thought process in many cases comes from where you are in life. If you are that person that's considered rich, whatever rich is, right? You have a million dollars, a half a million dollars, $10 million, whatever it is. If you're considered rich, right? If that's you, then you're not going to say you should tax us more. You, Warren Buffett could say, yeah, we need to make adjustments to the tax code, but he still doesn't pay any taxes every year or very minimal in taxes every year because he knows how things are set up, how things are structured, right? When it comes to midterm elections, right, are there going to be some changes here? 
There might be. And if they are, can they have a positive or a negative effect on the market? The answer is yes. Right? Right now, and look at how things are done politically. Whether you are a Trump fan or not, doesn't matter. Right? Look at how things are done politically. Do you think there's a reason that the January 6th hearings are happening right now and they're happening live on TV at six o'clock at night Eastern? Why is that? They're doing it to get the most shock and awe from it on television where the voter can see it, whether they think they can win or not. I don't believe they really think they will win, but it's a matter of can we discredit him as much as possible? Right. Uh, can we discredit Rudy Giuliani because his son is running for governor in New York? Right. Can, what can we do to mess somebody up? Right. How, how do we plan this out the way um, to get that most shock and awe from it? Depending on who takes House, who takes Senate, you're going to see some things that will will take place in there. If if both go over to Republican, what happens? The president is a dead duck president. He gets nothing. If one of them go to the Republicans, the president is pretty much a dead duck. Now, I don't agree with that, that any president should be put in that position. And I'm not saying that I agree with Biden or not agree with him or any of that. Right. What I'm talking about is the president should not be there. They should not be in that position. Right. But we have gotten so divided in this country. That. That's the way it's going to be until someone can step in. And I don't know who that someone is until someone can step in and actually unite everybody. And I don't see that with anybody that I that I think personally is going to run. Right. You know, some of you said that you like Trump. Awesome. If he runs again, is he the best person for the country? I don't know. Is he going to win? I don't know. Right. I have, you know, different opinions on yes or no. But bottom line is. Bottom line is you're seeing a shift now in uh, Democrats leaving and becoming Republicans. You're seeing a shift now of Democrats leaving their, um, their elected positions. You're seeing a shift now where you've got politicians who every one of them, Democrats, independents, Republicans, Good guys, bad guys, good girls, bad girls, every one of them are absolute freaking liars. Open mouth, insert foot, bottom line, bottom line, okay? <clears throat> uh, how do you tell a politician is lying? His lips are moving or her lips are moving, their lips are moving, okay? Every one of them. It's a matter of who's the less of two evils, right? <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. Who is the less of two evils? We are going to see some things take place, folks, right? If one, if the Republicans take control of one or the other, I think you see the market go up regardless of what inflation is doing. How long it lasts is something else. I can't say that until we see how much it goes up. Is this too much of an overreaction and people go, whoa, 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 whoa. This ain't real, right? That's not happening, right? If it goes up, you know, I had a conversation with somebody the other day. They said, I can't believe they're not passing this bill for baby formula uh, reform law. And I said, you know, I haven't read it, but I was told that 75% of what's in that bill has nothing to do with baby formula. Nothing. I think any politician that does a multi-item um, bill should be shot and taken out of office. You want to pass baby formula reform? Do the damn baby formula reform and that's it. Just pass something. Don't say we need a park in Iowa somewhere or we need a new school built in California. No, that should not be a negotiating tactic. Not at all. Not at all. Right. And folks, whether you realize it or not, inflation is nowhere near as low as they're telling us it is. Absolutely not. They can't tell us what it really is. It's estimated 12 to 16%, and I've heard some say higher is what we're really seeing. Look at how much cars have gone up, used much more than even new, which I'm happy with since we're looking to buy new for my daughter, right? She just graduated with her master's. She's got a nice graduation gift coming, right? So you look at what's going on, and it's not putting us in a good place. The markets are going to react to the elections, but what do you need to do? You need to sit back 
in position one in your chair every day. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you need to analyze pictorially what's going on to the left. And when I'm talking about to the left, I'm not talking about politicians. I'm talking about on the chart, right? What is happening? Look left on the chart that we can decipher. Ah, I see this here. Oh, I see that 4180 level on the S&P 500, right? That major FIB level. Okay, I see that midpoint that's coming up. On, I see that FIB. What can you decipher from what you see and make the determination? The reason my system works as well as it does, and it doesn't matter what trade I'm doing. If I'm in a directional trade, if I am in a fixed trade, uh, not a fixed trade, a, um, a selling position like a covered call or a diagonal, here is a support level. It was resistance right here. Right? We broke through. What do I need to have happen? Pull back to retest, bounce, the entries here. That's me for everything that I do is right there. That's everything. I don't need all these special fancy rules. I don't need these lots and lots of crazy indicators. Right? I use my set of indicators and they work for me. Right? Build your system out the way that we teach here. Follow some of what I do. Follow some of what Tony does and what Brandon does and what Ryan does and Amelia does and build out your system. Do you guys realize that between Amelia, Brandon, Tony, Ryan, and myself, we have well over 100 years of experience. You'd be crazy not to build off of that. Crazy. You're right, Robert. You are right. Uh, let's see. I got a couple of. Oh, there you go. I'll name the program Shock and Awesome. <laughs> um, cool. Let's see. Um, Yeah, politicians, you're right, Robert. They're definitely beholden for years, especially now with the internet. Um, it's just, it's not a good place for them to be. <laughs> um, uh, yes, Brenda, you are the number one answer today. You win the, the, all the points that don't matter. <laughs> uh, but you're right. You're absolutely right. Uh, Kevin said, you are so right. Your system works. Guys, listen, when... Uh, Chris is in here, right? I think so. Yeah, Chris is in here. When Chris comes in and says, I was trading before, now I went through a simple $49 program and I'm killing it on a day-to-day -day basis and I'll share my trades with anybody that wants to see them, right? I mean, guys, the, the systems that we teach work. It's just a matter of, are you following the system, right? That's really what it comes down to. Are you following it, right? All right, we got a few minutes left. Give me the candidates that you want me to take a look at. I'll be happy to look at them. Trip dropped in. Uh, he said AMD, IBM, and Micron. AMD is in a good squeeze. IBM is in a good switchback this morning. Just got stopped out with a small profit on Micron. Uh, was also good, but I think I will um, hang back until after the earnings. Okay, so let's go take a look real quick at those three, at the new Trip Trio. Uh, he put in AMD first. Drop me in, folks. We've got about 12 minutes left. All right, so AMD is up above the eight. We're kind of in between there. Um, so squeeze. Yep, if you can get the bounce off the eight, you've got the opportunity to the, the 50, I mean, the 21, the green line. Uh, it's a, uh, three bucks, not too shabby, right? In there. Uh, IBM, wrong key. IBM, where is it? Okay, there we go. So on IBM, see, this was one that was that switch back or that bi-directional or whatever we call it, right? We were there. You could have broke down and got down into yesterday's eight moving average, which was about 137 and a half, 138, somewhere around there. Uh, and then today, instead, we bounced and we moved to the upside. Lots of opportunity there. Um, actually, let's see. So $6.20 is the move 
42.58. So there's almost eight dollars in there. So we we would definitely need a negative one three six. Okay, good. So 142 to 146 trip is where we're looking at. So I like this one a lot for IBM. And then Trip said he did a trade on Micron this morning. And there was that same exact thing. We closed yesterday, Friday. We closed right at the 5851. The moving average was right at the 5851. We gapped up and retested. Look, 5851. Remember that Micron, 5851. Micron, 5851. MU, 5851. I don't want a one minute chart. Oh, didn't want to do that either. Fifty-eight, fifty-one. Woo! Look at that gap up. Oh well. Okay, good, good, Rob. <laughs> gap up, pull back, boom. There you go. Really nice, really nice bounce there. Good trade on a trip. Hey, it pulled back as the market flipped over a little bit. What are you going to do, right? You, you lock in some profit and you call it a day. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Uh, let's see. One minute. All right, let's put that back. Um, Chris said, just closing my cues. 100% profit. Woo! There you go. Great job, Chris. Great job. All right, so we got Q's, QQQ is one that uh, Brent is asking for. All right, so we got the gap up and the pullback, right? We got a small move down and we came back up above that 293. So 293 and 300 are support resistance there, Brenda. If we break to the downside, look at that 291.20, which is the eight, uh, 21 moving out. <clears throat> 291, 293. Yeah, it's hard to try to take a trade in there. And even the break below that is tough. So I really want the bounce to the upside. Scale out of half the trade at 300 and run the second half up to 309 and a half. Great opportunity. Uh, and then Amazon, Brenda said, AMZN. Like I said, Amazon was an amazing setup today. All right? It missed by about 30 or 40 cents to the resistance level. All right? Came up. Failed right back down, right back down, right off that level, okay? And getting right back down towards the 21, which is going to be its support. So a lot of opportunity between 118 and a half and 112 and a half. Six bucks. Six dollars. Yeah, Chris, Amy said congrats on your trade. Um. But I would only trade this, you know, the gap up or the run up, I should say, to that 118 half and a fail or the bounce off of the 112.90, 113 level. That's all I would look for this. And of course, you can look at pivots and, and so forth. Uh, let's see. Kevin is saying snow. No snow, Kevin. We don't want snow. <laughs> no snow here, baby. I'm just getting used to the sunshine. Uh, he's looking at a short. All right. So if you look at today, where did we get to on a high? 152.20. So 48 cents away from our resistance level, which is absolutely awesome. So one uh, let me see if I can't write that down. 152.68 on snow. Let's go do this. Snow was on our list. Oh, was it yesterday or Friday rather? Thursday, yeah, because we didn't do Friday because of the um, inner circle. So snow got an upgrade on Thursday by JP Morgan, right? So if we go and look at snow, we snap a horizontal line on there and let's move it to 152.68. All right, so we push right down. 
So we push right down. You can see where it opened. All right, so opening price, 150.38. So about 80, 90 cents away. But visually, when I look at it, it's tough. That was just all wick. Here, yeah, we got close enough, but we're at 1140. Anything after 1130 to 130 is kind of an off limits for me. Okay. Doesn't mean you can't trade it this afternoon. Right. Good opportunities there. But when you look at it, we go back to Omega charts. That 152.68 is the key to me on this one, Kevin, for a short position. Okay. Roku. I hope that helps, Kevin. Let me know down below. Uh, Eric is asking for Roku. Woo! Uh, this one came up today, did it not? That was Thursday. Yeah, we looked at it today, but it wasn't on our list. So it pushed right into that 100 level, went a little bit higher and failed. So let's go and look at Roku today right off that 100. So tough. We opened up there, we ran up, and we fell right from it. You'd have to go right down to the one-minute chart. The five certainly did not give you the, the setup. Oh, you know what? Let's just do it here. Let's turn this into a one. I've already got the lines drawn on it. So we pushed up, we failed, and we failed hard. Kind of tough uh, for the entry in there, at least for me. Uh, really didn't get the move I want. 99.46 was the high. 99.51, so 49 cents. I don't know. I don't think I would have taken. I would have waited for, especially with the moving averages there, I would have waited for the retest. Never got it. It was a great break, though, to the downside. So if you're looking at Roku, Erica, um, you got downward momentum to 91, upward 96. That's where your range is right now. Stay involved with the rules. All right? So Kevin said, so if it goes up to 152.68 and fails, then shorted. So let's go back to snow. Yeah, and, it, and Kevin, it doesn't have to get right up to the 152.68. Maybe it's 152, right? 151 and three quarter. You've got to decide what that number is. But you're trying to get to the point where you're comfortable with how far away it is. As long as you are comfortable, then you go and take the trade. And if you're unsure, then you want to do it on paper and do it again and again and again and again. Right? Over and over and over and over and over again. All right. Um, bum, 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 bum. So downside then, Kevin, would still be that 140 level. All right. But yes, retest, fail, take the bearish, the, the bearish entry with the target down here. My target would be at 141, 141 and a quarter. Somewhere around there would be my target. Good. Kevin said, okay, gotcha. Excellent. Excellent day. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, bum, 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 bum. So, guys, uh, Amy, can you drop that link back in for tonal market control? Guys, make sure to go ahead and get registered for the total market control training as Amy drops that link in. Um, you won't be disappointed with it. We're only doing two of the, the trainings. One is at 8 at night. One is at 12. Um, we have not decided to put it out on recording. I don't know if we're going to or not. So take advantage of the live training for it uh, and watch that, you know, check that out. Hopefully you're able to make one of those two days um, and then set those dates aside in, in uh, October, 27, 28, 27 for everybody, 28 for mastermind and inner circle. And uh, of course, if you have an interest in one of those programs, you can just drop an email to support and someone will reach out to you because you can't just sign up for that. It doesn't work that way. So there you go. Amy dropped that in. So with that, everybody, make it a profitable day. Stay focused on the quest to becoming a great trader. Keep crushing it. And remember, remember, you're just one trade away. Take care, everybody. I will see you all at our next...